Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint some purple flowers. I'm calling it Purple Meadow. Um, it's going to be a really fun project. I'm really excited about this one. I'll show you start to finish how to, how to do it. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat for our live shows. <laughs> so if you have questions, you can ask those, and I'll try to answer them. <laughs> Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm going to be using a 9 by 12 inch Belgian linen canvas board for this one. It's a Frederick's uh, canvas, so thank you to them for providing our canvas today. Um, our brushes are going to be a number 12 bright for some of the background work, also number 8 filbert, number 6 filbert, number 4 filbert. I'm not sure if we're going to need all of those, but uh, we'll have them on hand just in case. And then I've got the number two aught round, um, and these are the 6100 series in Princeton. Um, and then I've got the Princeton Velvet Touch, got the quarter inch and three eighths inch angles, and quarter inch and three eighths inch Willis blenders for some of the more detailed work. Uh, the Willis blenders are just kind of a rounded filbert with a stiff bristle, so um, any kind of stiff bristled brush will work for that for some of the um, kind of fuzziness in the background. I've also got, well, I've got two of each, so you don't need four. Um, I've got <laughs> 3 8 inch and 5 8 inch uh, Deerfoot stiplers, just some sort of stippling brush um, for that kind of blendy background. So um, whatever you choose to use is fine. I just, um, this is what I'll be using today. So I've got a bristle fan brush too, number 10 aught for some splattering. So yay, yay to splatters. We need a, like a cheer, cheering, um, no, like one of those, you know, laugh machine kind of things where it goes, <sighs> yeah, exactly like that for the <sighs> splattering when we do that. And then we'll need a um, pen for our signature. So this is a Pigma FB Sakura that I use uh, when I do my signatures. All right. I feel like I'm a little off today for some reason. I'm not sure why. Mark's already been laughing Thanks to our bar sponsors. Oh, yes. Thank you to Princeton for sponsoring our brushes, too. We were already using them, so it was kind of a win-win for us. <laughs> nice to be an official ambassador. All right, mm -hmm. let's go over our colors. I've got uh, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Burnt Orange, Yellow Oxide, Cadmium Yellow Medium, Thalo Green Yellow Shade, Teal, Thalo Blue Green Shade, Ultramarine Blue, Light Ultramarine Blue, Doxazine Purple, Quinacridone Magenta, and then this is Cadmium Red Light, which I'm not 100% sure we'll use. Um, unbleached titanium, titanium white, zinc white, and this is glazing liquid. So if you don't have all these colors, just use what you've got. Some of these are pre-mixed, so like the teal and the light ultramarine blue are um, kind of mixed colors that you can uh, just mix on your own. So I just have them out because it makes it faster for the process when we're painting it live. All right. So really, I'm not going to do any drawing on this today. I might do some later. Let me grab a chalk. I'm a little chalk bear. Here, say hi, chalk bear. Hi. <laughs> He's cute. <laughs> All right. So we'll, uh, we'll probably sketch on some of our just general flowers later, but for the most part, we're just going to kind of do three different layers on our background. We've got kind of a blue layer, the top, sort of a green layer in the middle, and then um, almost the bottom half is uh, kind of a yellowish pinkish green. I don't know. It's kind of a weird color. So I think we're going to try to mix that as we go and we'll do a lot of um, blending also. So for the background, I thought about painting the background with a yellow oxide, but um, I just decided to go ahead and um, leave it blank for now. So um, before I start, I want to say hi to everybody. Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for the live show or if you're watching afterwards, but hope you enjoy it. And if you do, if hope you'll subscribe and leave a comment to us and let us know what you liked so and thumbs up oh and thumbs up too yes thank you that lets youtube know that you want to see more also if you want to get notifications there's a little bell next to the subscribe button if you want to get notifications of all our live shows too 
um, since they don't really pay attention to subscribe anymore unless you click the bell. It pretty much, yeah. So, all right, let me keep them going here. Mark's like, let's get going. All right, so I'm gonna mix a little bit of the phthalo blue in ultramarine, but mostly ultramarine blue for this upper part here. And I'm gonna add some, let's add some burnt sienna, and see what happens. I wanna make it kind of like a, a deep, almost like a Prussian blue color, like a navy. Let's add a little bit of white. We'll be able to tell what color we've got going on. Uh, that's pretty close. I think I want a little bit more of that ultramarine blue look though. Maybe added a little bit too much of that burnt sienna. Oh yeah, that's gonna be pretty. Okay, so that's our color. So I'm gonna start with the kind of medium value that's got a little bit of the white in it and just start up here and start adding. And I'm gonna grab a little glazing liquid just to make it go on a little easier. And actually I can spray my canvas with a little bit of water, just one or two little spritzes. I don't wanna overdo it. That'll make the paint go on a little smoother onto the canvas when it's dry. So, all right, let's grab some of that darker. And right, this one, I'm just going to kind of lay down the color. I'm not gonna really worry too much about the background looking good. I'm kind of just slapping it on there back and forth. Add a little bit of white. All right, that's good. So now I've got most of the color off my brush. I'm gonna pick up teal, which is kind of that next greenish layer and start laying some of that in. Pull it up. So uh, what is the plural of hi? Plural of hi? Yeah, like when you say hi to somebody. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Well, plural? There, yeah. Is there such a thing as a plural? Like, I was going to say. Highs? Many, yeah, so many highs, but is it like H I apostrophe S? Because it's not really possessive, is it? No. And then if you just do H I S, well, then that's his. Oh, true. I didn't think about that. See? Okay, we need to stop right now and try to figure this out. So we're going to put the brush down. <laughs> We'll come back. <laughs> yeah, Chad is much more important right now. Highs to everyone. Is that what you're trying well, to say? Well, I was going to say there's so many highs. Like I say hi to this person and hi to that person and hi, hi, hi. And just, I was going to say so many highs, but then I'm... Um, there's got to be a way of... Damn it. You see what I'm doing now? I'm going back in and kind of darkening up and like adding a little um, brush strokey kind of thing using sort of the corner of the brush. Now, uh, over here, it's starting to dry. So when I touched it right there, it started to lift a little bit. So now it makes me, lets me know I need to leave that area alone and let it dry before I do anything else to it. So I'm gonna get a little bit of water and just kind of clean. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean out that blue because I'm just gonna start getting into that green and pink. I don't want the blue to influence it. So yeah, so, so hello, you can say so many hellos. That's got a plural. It's not fair. You didn't expect this conversation, did you? I didn't. It's hard to paint and think about that at the same time. So I'm going to concentrate on this. You work on that. Um, okay. All right. Teach his own. So getting a little bit of the phthalo green mixed with this teal. And teal is just phthalo green and phthalo blue plus white. So uh, it's already got that color in it. And we're just adding a little bit more. And I don't really want to go much lower than the halfway mark here. So I'm trying to keep it above without kind of messing up into the blue that we've already got going on. All right, so that's good enough there. And then so now I'm going to start with the um, quinacridone burnt orange, a little bit of yellow. That'll make kind of a khaki green. That's what I'm seeing down in here. Yeah, that's pretty close to it. 
Now, and down here, I'm gonna start kind of just sweeping up. Up here, we've got like little dots. Down here, it's kind of more these grassy things. So I'm gonna start sweeping my brush strokes up this way instead of dabbing it like I was before. A little bit of white. That base color and then a little bit of yellow. There we go, let's get some of this color in there. That's pretty. So we'll just say hi to all y'all. Oh yeah, that's a good way. There you go. Or use guys if use you're guys. from the Boston area. <laughs> it's Mark. This marks the uh, neck of the woods there. He grew up in New Hampshire. Not too far. He's a New Englander. I didn't even know where New England was when we moved there. My mom was like, we're moving to New England. And I'm like, mm. I had to look it up. Spoken like a true Californian. And I'm, it, this is before Google, so I had to actually take, it took some effort to actually like an look it up. encyclopedia? Huh? I think I did. I think I had to look it up in an encyclopedia to figure out where we were moving. So, interesting fact. I thought it was a state, <clears throat> so sadly... <laughs> like, is that a state? We, or, <laughs> we went to Florida yeah. for vacation once. Go ahead. Yellow oxide and burnt sienna here. Or not burnt orange, I mean. And uh, we went to a McDonald's uh -huh. when we got there. We were, going, we were in like the Disney World area. Mm -hmm. And a uh, person was like, oh, where are you from? And we said, uh, New Hampshire. And they're like, oh, where's that? And like, it's in New England. And yeah. they're like, well, oh, I hope you like it in the States. <laughs> and we were just like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's nice. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's pretty much how the Southern, anywhere, you know, we, we're pretty much like if you're not, if you're not here, it doesn't really matter to us <laughs> a whole lot. I was from California, so I was pretty much thought that. Is California. That was the best. I didn't understand why anybody lived anywhere else. It was pretty much what I was thinking at the time. And I wasn't really, I under, didn't understand why nobody else was impressed that that's where I was from. So we moved to Boston area. It was very disappointing. All right. So I kind of brought it up on the sides just a little bit. And I'm just kind of going up over, but try not to cover all of that greenery, but you can kind of see what we've got going on now. It's starting to take shape. Just every now and then adding a little bit more of that green in there. And you kind of want streaks of the different colors, so I'm just going to kind of go back over here while that's still wet. It's starting to dry, so I don't want to mess with it too much. Well, it's, are you ready to dry, hun, for me? I know I, no. I told you that I was going to have you drying today. Yes, I did. I told you yesterday. You did? Yes, I did. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. I think we were in the room, in the bedroom. No, you weren't. Uh, or in here. I said, oh, that's right. Well, it was in here then. No, I did tell you. 100% told you. This is our This is our normal kind of conversations because... Mark never listens to me. <laughs> well, I remember talking about painting, but okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back in an hour. Okay. <laughs> Quickly, please. Um, yeah, okay. So this weekend is our bonus video weekend. We're doing it early because we've got uh, things coming up. Um, next weekend, uh, we're having a yard sale, and then the weekend after, we're going to be... Um, we're not going to have a show, so the only other option would be the very last uh, Sunday of the month. So we decided to go ahead and do it early this month. So we're going to do our Patreon bonus video. It's a $5 level um, video. We're going to do the giraffe mom and baby. So cute. Um, and they're going to be in black and white like this. I'm going to make the background a little bit less obvious because I think it's competing with the um, with them. So they'll it'll probably be a lot lighter, so they'll stand out a little bit more. Um, but I'm really looking forward to this one. It'll be really fun. I think it's a sweet little 
thing. It's kind of in our mom and babies uh, series. We did the llama mama um, earlier for Mother's Day around May, I think it was. Um, so this is kind of along the same lines. And um, I think it'll be a fun project. If you missed it, we did um, last Saturday, we did our country um, fence. So that one turned out really good. I really was happy with this. And this was last month's uh, bonus video. Um, and so if you sign up for the Patreon $5 level, you get um, not only um, this month's video for the giraffe, but you also get last month's um, and all of the other previous bonus videos that we've got. We've got several. Um, so, yep, thank you. All right, so this is our kind of just starting level here. So if you want to um, sign up for that, you can go to patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. And Mark, hopefully he's putting the door back, but he'll put the graphic on there. He's trying to put the door back on the studio. We literally don't have a door on the studio yet, so it's propping. He's having to prop it up in the doorway, which I was doing my video um, for my patrons, uh, my Wednesday video on um, Wednesday, or no, Thursday, I mean, my Thursday video um, and I had Spencer prop it up for me, and I couldn't get out because I couldn't get out of the studio. And he went and took a shower, so I was stuck in here. It was pretty funny because <laughs> you had to be there. But, um, yeah. So. Ooh, who outsmarted who? Exactly. I was like, ah, I need the door up there because it's kind of loud. And, you know, uh, there's nothing up on the wall, so it's very echoey in the house still. And we're going through renovations. I forgot to mention that. So if you've... Yeah, so our our lives are pretty much chaos right now. So <laughs> the yard sale hopefully will help. Okay, so I've mixed up some teal and some white. I used zinc white at first, but it wasn't cutting it down a little bit enough, so I went ahead and went with the straight white. And now I'm wiping most of that off. I did not wet my brush. You want your paints moist, but your brush dry when you're using the Deerfoot Stippler. And I'm going to just start going in here and... Pressing in some, and I want some a little bit brighter color than that, so I'm going to go ahead and too much paint on my brush. We want it to be kind of soft. We want our edges to sort of blend out, so we just need to kind of slowly build up these layers. Don't try to do it all at once. That's one of the things that will help give your painting depth is if you kind of take your time. Slowly build your layers up. Wipe most of that off. There we go. I added a little bit of phthalo blue to this one. I'm just going to slowly kind of scumble. And it's just basically scrubbing, dry brushing these kind of wispy things happening in our background. I'm gonna leave some of these dark areas too, so don't cover it all up. But and then as we get to this horizon line here, we're gonna add a little bit more of the lighter colored ones. There's a couple of spots that are pretty bright. And just scrub out those edges so they don't. These edges are not. Um, like they don't look like stippled, they sort of look smooth, the edges do. So I'm trying to kind of smooth out some of that stippled look from them. And I could have used a round, um, round brush too. And I thought about, I might switch over to my filbert here in a minute. But I'm going to get some of these on first and then we'll kind of add other details. Okay, that's looking good. So let's go ahead and get a filbert, and I'm thinking the smaller one maybe the number four. I'm going to get some glazing liquid and some of this teal. It's got a little bit of the white in it. I'm just going to start dabbing into that area that I've already kind of stippled and just making a kind of a brighter center for some of them and keeping those edges kind of rounded out. So blend out your edges. Can 
get a little bit with a darker blue in some places. This is phthalo blue with a little bit of that teal in it. That's pretty. I'm kind of trying to get a bokeh effect. It's not a real uh, bokeh. Um, so it doesn't have the really hard circles, but it's similar. So I want to do the overlapping thing like we would see with that. Okay, we sat in here for what, two hours? Uh huh. Doing stuff and getting ready. Mm hmm. And now there's a fly in here. I know. I know. You let the fly in. How? I think when you went out to blow dry, he heard you. Oh, his he there was a party going on. His notification went off and knew that you did. were live. Yep, yep. He's like, oh man, I'm late. I'm late. i got to get in there. I was supposed to harass them. <laughs> you are not part of the crew. Fly, go away. So excited. He wants to see what we're painting. He was landing on our canvas the other day. Okay, so just going back in with that dark color, I'm kind of going around some of these edges and darkening them up. Oh, he's buzzing my head now. You know what he was he was doing earlier? He was waiting for me to hold. I was moving boxes and stuff around. He'd wait for me to have my hands full. Oh, he's trying to land on me. And then I got the fly swatter out. I So I set my boxes down. He was landing on my face. And he was still landing on my face. I had the fly swatter in my hand, and he kept he kept trying to land on my face, and I couldn't get him because he was like right in my face. I know I would have hit myself. I know he he knows what he's doing. He's smart. He's he's just buzzing around my head over here. All right, so just dabbing in around these edges, sort of blending them out a little bit. You can kind of see where we've done it over here and where we haven't over here. It's, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's a little bit harsher. So we're just kind of smoothing out some of those brush strokes. Somebody would like to know, is there something they can use other than the glaze? Um, what do they have? I mean, um, yeah, just something that, that, um, creates a little flow. Oh, see, he's landing on my canvas over here. He's on my brushes right here. Can you get him? Get him. Oh, you got him. Okay, no. We need fly Sorry. cam. Yeah, no. Oh, he left a leg on my brush. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> he did. <laughs> so gross. Don't tell Courtney. My daughter-in-law doesn't like us to kill flies and stuff. Oh, this is a great video so far. I know, it is. We were, like, really on track today. What was I saying? Oh, um... You could use matte medium or a medium of some sort like that. That You know, I've seen artists using that. Um, the thing with matte medium, the, the reason I don't use it is because it, it does mattify your paint, so it, it dulls the color a little bit, um, but it does work well for blending and stuff. Then you can always glaze it again, you know, if you want to brighten it up um, or just, you know, add uh, glaze, glazes of color over the top. But... All right, I'm going to grab a little bit more of that phthalo blue mixture here. It is working pretty well. I think I liked having that fuzzy first, so then we can kind of focus on, we don't have to worry about the edges so much. We can just kind of focus on the centers of some of these, brightening them up. Let's add some white here. And just kind of changing the direction so that I'm getting a soft rounded spots on here. Okay, got another question. Okay. They'd like to know if they can add anything to their paints to keep them from being so transparent. Um, white 
a white will help um, make your paint more opaque. So if you're, you know, using a transparent paint, then adding white will definitely do the trick. Chicken also. And then what you can do is you, you add the white, you put your color down, and then you glaze back over the top of your color on top of the white. And that gives you that bright, bold color. So especially if you're going over a color like this, you know, where it's dark like this and you need to, you know, need to cover it up for some reason. Um, and your, your color's not covering it, just adding a little bit of white will help. And then, like I said, you can go back in and brighten that color back up by just adding the color on top once it's dry adding the main color so whatever like if you're trying to cover the blue with yellow say yellow especially is a very is a hard color to cover anything else with it's one of the lowest uh, value colors out there so it it doesn't cover other colors very well let's go ahead and grab some of this zinc white here and start adding some of that in too zinc white's a transparent white so it's gonna be a little bit more soft and subtle than the white white medium white. But anyhow, what I was saying was if you wanted, like if you were going to go in here with some yellow or something like that, you would do the white first and then, or add white to your yellow and then at the very end do another layer of white, of yellow over the top of the white yellow and it would make a really bright yellow cover. It almost looks like clouds, which I don't really want it to look like clouds, so I think once we get the flowers in there, it won't look like clouds so much. All right, it's coming along. Let's get some of this. All right, I think I like that. So let's keep with this brush. It seems to be working pretty well. I'm going to try to... Oops, nope, that's drying. I'm going to scrape that off. Excuse the noise here. If it makes a noise. Clean off a spot on my palette here. to change that blade out and I thought I was going to slice my thumb off it scared me it wouldn't come out and then I couldn't get the new one back in you know pushing on a razor blade is never <laughs> so I ended up getting my pliers out and holding it yeah I was scared it was scary uh, all right so I think I'm going to go back to the deer foot here and work on this area like we did before. Get kind of some soft fuzzies going and then we can add. There's not a whole lot going on in this transition area, so I don't have to do a whole lot. I'm getting that zinc white and getting some of this um, mixture here with these three. Yellow, brown, green. Cadmium yellow, yellow oxide, burnt orange, and a little bit of the green teal color here. Basically we're making, you know, we're just switching from the one color that we've got up here to the color below it, so it's not a... Getting some teal here. There we go. Yeah, we got a request from a six-year-old. Oh, really? Yeah, it says, uh, they want to know, can you paint something more boyish other than flowers? <laughs> Maybe like a dinosaur? <laughs> We do have that tank that we painted. The tank, yeah. What about a dinosaur? Oh, a dinosaur. Nice. I like dinosaurs. Sure. And then uh, what you were just, so you're, you have a What's glass. What's our six-year-old name? I don't have that. Oh, okay. Maybe we'll get it here. No, that's okay. I was just going to give a shout out. Okay. Well, we'll get Thanks it. Thanks for the suggestion. 
I like that idea. And your pellet is a glass pellet. It and is. You have a, a razor blade scraper for it. Mm-hmm. The glass pellets in your Amazon store. It is. Is a scraper. Yes. Boom. Down below, link. Hit the Amazon link for her store. Mm-hmm. Amazon shop. Amazon.com slash shop uh, slash Angela Fine Art. That's my Amazon store. And I've got all kinds of stuff in there. I've got music and books and I've got three, four different um, storefronts. I've got the, if you go to the that link, it'll, it'll sh- do a landing page and then it'll have four different choices. So if you go to the acrylic painting supplies list, then it'll be in there. If you go to the books and music one, it won't be in there. (laughs) (laughs) But you'll see some books and music that are recommended. (laughs) We also have a new section in our newsletter that we're kind of doing, featuring some some, uh, of that in case anybody cares. But kind of fun. We're sending out a weekly newsletter, so if you want to get that, you can sign up on Wix.com. Or actually, it's uh, not Wix.com, it's (laughs) ThankfulArt.com. It's a Wix website, but it's not. Sorry, I'm thinking of painting. It's not not easy. (laughs) (laughs) Thinking and doing anything else. Painting and talking, I should say. Okay. (laughs) All right, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm kind of just softly blending all of this. It kind of smooshes all together. looks really soft and blendy, really pretty. Get some more of this light teal with the... with the... uh, zinc white here and add some of that along here. Back in. Fuzz out some of these edges that we got going on up here. Okay. Yeah, your toppy thing is very loud. I guess it's because there's just no other sounds going on right now. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in the room to insulate. Yeah. Yeah. I can hang up a bunch of blankets. It's okay. Yeah, I didn't think... some art on the wall soon. I didn't think you'd let me. No, I won't. I already got a critique of my... I got like... Mark's decorating is like terrible. I have like two square feet. Uh-huh. And she looked over and like, okay, yeah, that's not going to happen. No. So. None of that. None of that. He moved like the pretty, my pretty basket down on the bottom by the floor where you couldn't see it. And then he put up his big old ugly filing tote thing up in the top shit off, like right at the very front. Like, nope. That tote goes to the bottom and the pretty stuff gets put up to the top. That's right. So. Yeah, I have to bend over every time I want to pay the bills and <laughs> get that out and be very, you We'll know. get you a pretty tote, and then you can put it up where you want it. <laughs> it's okay, honey. It's all right. Form before, or what, what did I say earlier? I don't know. It didn't make sense to me, so. <laughs> pretty much. It went right out the window. <laughs> Need some teal. F- some fash it over form or something like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is an art studio. It's got to look pretty. It's got to be inspiring. That's uh, inspiring me totes. to pay the bills and <laughs> and not get arrested. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. So going back in with some of these dark areas here, just kind of 
I mean, this is going to have several layers before we're done, so we're just going to keep on going back and forth. Try not to cover up what we've done, but kind of just add to it. And Let's add some zinc white to this blue that we've got going on for our background color. And just do some of that here and there. Keeping the dark blue up toward the top and I want to go down too low it kind of starts transitioning to the softer colors it's really right in here this is probably still too dark even through here Mona says I should have a refrigerator over here for all my snacks you really should you really should So I think I'm getting getting there pretty close. This one still needs some work here. Let's get some white teal. They look kind of like clouds. I think we are just because of the colors and it's just cloud colors. So our eyes kind of interpreting it as that. But I think once we get our flowers in there, it'll be better. I mean, it really doesn't matter if it looks like clouds. It'll work in either way. So, are you going to give me back my magnet over there? Which magnet? I noticed you were advertising it as yours, uh -huh. and you got it hung on your side. The the China, the one from China. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, if, ha it's you know, hashtag magnets from Mark. If she she mentioned me on there, so I think I think that it could have been for me too. Hmm. Okay. We do need to go show the magnets we've gotten this week. This We haven't shown them in a while, so we've got a whole slew of them that we need to show. Okay, just so getting back in here with some of the white. I think we're getting really close to done with this upper area here. I'm going to get a little bit smaller. Actually, let's go ahead and use the Willow's Blender here. This one you can wet down. So I'm going to use some of this teal and phthalo blue. Let's use a little bit of that ultramarine blue too. The light ultramarine blue. Wipe most of it off. Yeah, let's use that color up here. That'll that'll help because we'll be using this color in our flowers. So that's good. Using some teal and white here. And I can use this brush to kind of round out those edges and define them a little bit better. I'm going to use teal in the light ultramarine. Light ultramarine is just white plus ultramarine blue, so make kind of an in-between color. There we go. And 
can really, you can stop at any point when you, you know, if you're happy, once you're happy with it. So you don't have to keep going like I have been. You can just... And once you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> don't forget to clap your hands. <laughs> Thanks, honey. I appreciate that. Good advice. I didn't know that was for painting, too, but that's good. Good to know. It's mandatory. It's pretty much for anything, right? It's just a life life lesson. Some life lessons for Mark. <laughs> just make sure you put the brushes out when you clap your hands. You could get paint on yourself. Okay. Good thinking. Okay, I'm adding... Ultra Bean Blue here with my glazing liquid. Glazing around those edges. Notice that the, the new floor is louder. And when I moved my mat, uh, my, really? the carpet, you know, dulled the sound, muffled the sound. So The hard surface reflects the sound more? Yep, it does. What? It's amazing. We should put carpet over it? Mm-mm. No? Okay. And some teal. I'm just going to go in straight teal now with some glazing. Glaze some teal over some of these white areas. You can see what it does. It kind of changes the color. It's already got that intense white color down and now we're just making it more teal. Add some white here. I'm going to do some brighter right up in here. Okay. And then anywhere we want to add color, we just go in with our glazing liquid and add it over the top of these white areas that we've got going on. It'll tone it, change the tint. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. You were gonna clap your hands over there. Thank you. <laughs> it does sound so weird in here without anything to dull the sound. Other than me? Exactly. few areas of bright white here. Just trying to catch those. Put those back in. All right, oh, that's good. So let's go down here and I'm going to keep this brush. I'm going to mix up some of the yellow and green with some of this teal. Add a little bit more white.
And then we'll do some of these circles down in here too. Just a few. Okay, and then now we've got some of the, I'm going to go ahead and add some of this teal down here. I'm seeing just a little bit of it. Just tapping, kind of blending out those edges, doing kind of circles with it. Really any scrubby brush will work, but this, the Wills Blender kind of makes it easy to do. It's got the right texture that we're looking for, so it makes it easy to get these effect that we're looking for. Okay. Very good. Now I'm going to start looking at the flowers, so we can draw on some of our flowers here. I think this is dry enough. Maybe we've got one really high up here. Another one right there. Another one right here. One right here. I'm going to be careful not to press too hard. I'll lift the paint off my canvas. As they get down closer to us, they're going to get bigger. So these ones right in here are going to be a little bit larger than the ones farther back. And they're really kind of smushed. They're not quite circles. Somebody told me what kind these are. I can't remember. They're not thistle. I thought they were thistle, but they're not. She told me what kind it was, and I didn't write it down. Okay, something like that. So let's go ahead and grab the purple. I'm going to spray my palette. Grab the purple and burnt umber. That'll be our kind of base color for the underside of these. And there's some areas that are pretty dark, but we're going to kind of lighten it up just a little bit at first. And I'll go on too dark. So add a little bit of white to it. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and use that. Right in here and just kind of put the base of some of these flowers in. Some of them are going to be fuzzier than others. So these ones that are in the background, we can use a different brush. We can use this brush so that we get kind of that softer edge to them. And then these ones that are in the foreground, well, I'm just going to go ahead and do them all with this fuzzier brush and then we can harden up the edges that we want hard. So keeping it soft in some of these that are farther back, and they'll actually be a little bit more blue too. They'll be closer to this color 
Here we can get some of the light ultramarine blue and use that. And keep them smaller. And the fun thing about this is that when we do this, uh, when we do these ones that are in the foreground that are, you know, more obviously flowers, your eye will interpret these ones that are far back here that are just like little soft, wispy blobs um, as flowers, even though they're not really defined. They're not defined in our picture either, but um, it's just kind of cool how our eyes sort of fill in the gaps for us without having to you know they're always kind of looking for cues and interpreting what we're seeing and so we put these kind of fuzzy flowers back here and then put the more detailed ones in the front foreground these ones back here suddenly become flowers instead of dots pretty cool I don't know if that made sense at all, but probably to somebody who's listening, yeah. <laughs> so not you, is what you're saying. We were trying to help somebody find their thumbs up button. Oh, nice. Cool. But I'm listening now. Go ahead, keep going with that interesting information there. <laughs> going with blue and some of these. It's okay. I'm done now. I, I was done with my profound thoughts section of this show. <laughs> I'll have to go back and watch it later then. It's okay. It wasn't that important. Let's keep on going here. So I'm going to go ahead and do these, and then we're going to end up like putting grass and things over the top of some of these. So some of them will get painted twice. Um, some we're going to leave with the stems going through over the top of them. So it's going to push them back into the for background and bring some of these forward for us. Now the dots are starting to kind of look more like flowers, too. Getting a little bit of the light ultramarine. Tap on the top edge there to highlight it a little bit. And get some white. that white at the top. Create that highlight. Is that cashmere? Mm -hmm. <laughs> cashmere, what are you doing? Are you trying to get your attention? I'm adding a little bit of the... Oh, she's rubbing on a mic. Yep. She found the mic. I should get a picture of that. Yeah, if we had that app working, we could... Show you a picture of Kajmer sitting on Mark's lap, rubbing all over the microphone. 
Cashmere's our cat, by the way. That would have been awkward if it was somebody else. Clarification. Right, clarification. <laughs> it's not some random person that walked in. <laughs> it is kind of a odd name oh, for a cat. <laughs> I guess if you think about it that way, yeah, that would be kind of... Mm-hmm. Weird. Not acceptable. No, not acceptable behavior. I can hear a purring. Hey, yeah, uh, somebody wants to know, uh, says that when they are using the fan brush and mm-hmm. they put it in uh, the water, it mm-hmm. separates into sections. How do they avoid that? Oh. Uh, with the fan brush, you probably shouldn't be putting it in the water in the first place. Um, because it, if it's a hog bristle, which is probably, you know, what normally these white bristled fans, if it's a bristle fan, then you don't really want it in the water. So, um, that's that, because what that happens is they get floppy. They, the water soaks into the fibers and then they just get soft and they just mush around. They don't keep this crisp, hard edge. So you keep, uh, you know, you can mix up your color ahead of time. Um, that you're going to be using with your fan brush and then grab it right when you're ready to go onto the canvas and that shouldn't do that for you. It shouldn't mush or separate. That was loud. Yeah, we're on the whole other side of the house. We're going to get street noises now from the main road out here. Okay. No, that wasn't my Prius. <laughs> Your Prius would have been more like. Maybe, if that. If that. Pretty, pretty much the noise that it makes. This is super, super. Super quiet. I drove it the other day. I didn't even know. I kept I kept turning it off and back on because I couldn't figure out if it was on or not. I can't hear the engine. Oh, I, can't. I, I must have done that three times. I'm not kidding. Every time I got into it, I'd start it. And then I think it wasn't started. So then I'd shut it off. <laughs> and then start it again. Oh, my gosh. It was pretty funny. <laughs> I'll keep my Highlander. Thank you very much. Somebody asked if the flowers are a globe amaranth. Maybe. Aram. I, I don't know. I, I think those are probably. Am I wrong? Aren't those bigger? I'm not sure. I think. I have I don't no idea. I think these are as big as that, but I'm not sure though. It could be. Look it up. Google it, honey. Google. We have Google now. It's awesome. It's a firm. I thought they were button flowers. They look a little bit like button flowers, but they're... N- the button yeah. flowers we have are, yeah, I don't think so. Globe thistle, no. They're not corn flowers. They're not corn flowers, no. And I don't think they're bachelor buttons. Are they beet flowers? Look, look at, look up purple, purple button flowers. I'm serious. I think that might be what they are. Okay, here we go. I'm just adding some random color here. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of the pink, the quinacridone magenta. Yeah, I think that might be them. Maybe. So it's wild onion. Well, yep, 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 yep. That's the one. Yep, that's what she said. Yeah, it was wild onion. We got that growing in our creek. Do we? Do we have these? 
Yeah, that they're not white. They're they don't white, turn not purple. blue or oh. purple or anything. Of course, we don't get the pretty ones. Plus, I pull them out before they seed and spread onions everywhere. Oh, nice. Okay, so I'm going to add some of this pink color. Just a few spots here. This is coming along pretty well. Every time I lean in to talk, Kashmir thinks I'm leaning in for her, so she rubs up against my beard. <laughs> You guys are having a moment over there. She's, well, she's. Oh, I see that. Yeah, she is. <laughs> she's literally rubbing in it. She's standing in his way in front of the microphone, like completely in front of it. I need to get a picture of that and I'll post it on Facebook later. I don't, I won't get you in it. I'll just get her. Okay, here's here I'll show the picture. <laughs> <laughs> there's cashmere. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> this is what she's doing to Mark. <laughs> she's totally in his way. Totally in his face. <laughs> Did you have so we're, we're having a, just no mommy can leave the room. She doesn't need to be part of this. We're just having a time here. Just daddy and me. She's a mess. It's hilarious. Okay, so before I get too much more done, I'm going to use this purpley pink color. Add a little bit of that. Um, burnt orange to it and get some of this glazing liquid and I don't want it to be super like in your face color yeah there we go I'm just gonna add these little seed pods all I'm doing is tapping this brush and kind of doing them in sort of lines so tapping them back and forth adding some little you can add some So I watered this down a little bit, but added a little bit of that glazing liquid to make it stick. And I'm going to use the angle brush and try to connect up some stems on here. She's preparing so loud. She's so happy to be in the studio with you. We usually kick her out. We've been letting her in lately, though. She's been she's been pretty good. She hasn't been too much of a mess, but she she's still trying to figure out her new place in the new studio. So I think she thinks she, she's part of the show now. She's your assistant. So which brush are you using for the this stems? Is the well, I've kind of got I've got two going on here. People get comments when I do that. <laughs> well, well, I don't even realize that I did it until I re I read the comments on of an old video and I was doing it too. There were a bunch of comments about me holding two brushes at the same time, so I don't know. So the answer is yes, angle brush for the stems? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Squirrel. Oh, yeah, no. Just adding some stems here. I'm trying to connect up the the ones that are real high up here. But I'm doing it very glazed, so they're soft. I don't want them too dark or harsh. You can add a little bit of the white if you need to. Just keep them kind of 
blendy looking. I hope you have an odd number of flowers there. I don't know. Oh, and a long time ago somebody asked about your nail color. Okay. I forgot all about it. I uh, it's in that box over there. I don't know. It's I think it's a Sally Hansen one. So pretty. Love it. Okay. So let's thank you. That felt good. titanium and mix it with the burnt orange and I'm using this stiff bristle brush here again and I'm just going to add some random uh, leaf shapes here I'm not worried about going over the top of my flowers because we're gonna we're gonna have all kinds of different things going on here so we'll we'll add color back over the ones that we need to be in focus, you know. The rest of these we're not too worried about. Maybe add a little bit of pink to this. Get some of that magenta. And some zinc white. Get that glazing liquid. And oh there we go. Those are it. What's Jason, Montana? Montana? That's where they grow? No, that's called Jazion, J A S I O N E, Montana. That's the name of the flower? That's the name of the flower. Ooh. Sheep spit. Sheep spit? Bit. B bit. B okay. <laughs> Much better. I was Sheep gonna spit. worried about that. <laughs> Name. I was like, who named that? Sheep exactly. <laughs> They're so beautiful. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're so, Good thing we're my so mic was on. <laughs> what? I'm glad my mic wasn't on. <laughs> I know. Oh. Goodness gracious. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Mona. Yay, Mona. So they're not wild onions? I don't know. Well, let me go to the... Uh, is it low? <clears throat> it says that it is a low-growing plant in the family Campana blah, 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 found in rocky places and upland regions of Europe and Western Asia. Ooh. Common names include sheep's bit scabious, blue bonnets, Blue oh, button, nice. blue oh. daisy, iron flower, sheep scabious, and sheep's bit. Blue button. Scientific name is Jession Montana. Blue button. Cute. So we don't have them here. That's a bummer. Road trip. <laughs> exactly. Okay, 
Okay, so just going back in here with this another pink color and adding some of that in. We're just really kind of creating all kinds of layers here. Stuff going on. brush with some white and or some yellow and green let's get some of this yellow oxide and then some of the white here there we go glazing liquid press it flat so that you get a straight edge on it and then we're just going to use it to grasses and if it's not showing up you can get a little bit more of the white make it more opaque there we go I'm doing this fairly quick so don't worry about going over the top of your purple flowers we can put those back in if we need to Okay, I think the flowers are of the Farmall family. <laughs> we got more opinions on it? Oh, yeah. Stephanie? Okay. Are we sorry we asked? <laughs> yet? Aren't we always? <laughs> <laughs> no. We need to know these things. All right, so mix in a little bit of this purple and pink color with a little bit of blue. I think, I can't remember what I got, grabbed. I think it was blue. Blue and purple. I probably grabbed a little bit of brown or something in there too. It looks pretty neutral. But I don't remember. I was talking to you. I think I grabbed this. this yeah, I did. Okay, so... I'm going to use a little bit of the glazing liquid here. And I'm going to go back over some of these spots here now and just add some more. And I've switched to this little bit smaller brush here. This is a quarter inch deer foot. Not deer foot. Um, Willow's Blender. Little 
going to push my brush nice and flat so I can get a good little straight edge and do some little highlights on some of these too. So next time we'll put the the laugh mic on Kashmir so people can just enjoy her purring. Mm -hmm. I know it is pretty relaxing, isn't it? Can people hear it? I just cranked up my mic real high so they could hear her. <laughs> can't really can hear it from here, so I'm sure if it's... cute. Doing a little bit with the orange. Just different colors here. So this blue is kind of encroaching over the top of some of these stems. So I'm going to get some of this teal blue white color from our sky and just scrub it back over some of these stems here. some purple and the burnt orange adding some darker just a little really to find some of these and I'm tapping in these ones that I want more focused I'm tapping so they have a crisper edge on them some of these are still a little bit blurry but some of them are Brighter. Okay, so these ones I want more blue, so I'm going to get ultramarine blue and purple and do that. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Whoops, I was looking at you, laughing at me. <laughs> it's like you interrupt yourself mid-sentence. Mid <laughs> yeah, there's, there's oh, that's nice. <laughs> Okay. Adding 
find some of this blue purple some other places she's still burning over there A big one right here. It's quite dark. Jeez. It has to be our next door neighbor, doesn't it? go cruising around the neighborhood after the show. Mm -hmm. We'll <laughs> teach them a thing or two. <clears throat> cruising around on what? Well, in your Prius? I'll do it like at three in the morning. <laughs> I still don't think it's going to have the same impact there, honey. Even if I rev the batteries? <laughs> Pretty sure. So if somebody doesn't have a Willow's, Willow's Blender, mm -hmm. what can be used? Um, well, you can you can use pretty much any scrubby brush. You could probably use the Deerfoot if you have one of those. Um, I'm trying to think. They have they sell really inexpensive. Um, hog hair bristles bristle brushes that you could you could use um i'm trying to think or if you have like an old brush that's kind of scruffy you could just use that you know anything that that allow you to kind of do this stippled effect would work uh, it helps if it's a little stiff bristled though because uh, then you can get a better Um, softer edges, you know. Okay, get some of this dark color in here. Some of it in here. So now we're building up our dark ones. These ones that we want to stick out a little bit more. Oh, now she's coming over to me. Hi, Cassie. No, she's not coming to me. She's going to go get into some trouble. So, uh, when is the uh, slogan competition over? Uh, I didn't set a date for it. I just when I find six that I like. So, it'll probably be sometime next week um, that we'll pick the pick the six finalists and vote on them. I don't have a set date, it just kind of depends on when I have time for it. But I have been kind of checking them out and there's some pretty funny ones. Mm -hmm. We get a slogan contest for a new t-shirt design that we, it's actually Mark's design. Mark came up with the concept, but it needs a funny title. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, funny or probably be more apt to get in the finals than <laughs> than the serious ones. Just saying, because it's a funny design. It's a stick man in a hammock. So, what are you trying to keep it? It's like all my secret? art. All my art is funny. <laughs> Unintentionally, <laughs> or not. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. 
Just for that, I'll fluff out my beard for you. Mm, nice. And Mark's been working on that beard for a while. Nine weeks. Okay, doing the light ultramarine blue over the top here. Some of these are more brown than others, but I'm going to make them purple. I uh, will add some brown, but I want the I want them to be purple. So I'm going to tap in some of the details in the edge of my brush. There, just kind of tapping off. I don't know if we need to zoom in. You can see that. Press that brush flat so it's got a nice fine line there and then just stepping and you can use this any really any brush for this like any that the, that'll do a fine line so you could use your your um, brush here to do it too in fact I'm gonna use the this brush to do my little dot dots that are happening in there so I'm gonna get the unbleached titanium And there's some little teeny tiny dots. Just use the very tip of the brush to do those. Mm -hmm. That brush just wants to be in the shot all the time. This one? Or is it just sitting off to the side? Yeah, like it's that? in the side cam. <laughs> okay. Get some of that brown. I'm going to round it off the bottom of this a little bit more. Just a little bit more like... Can I have the shape wrong a little bit? It comes in a little bit more. And then we'll get some ultramarine blue here. Whoop, too much water. These are the, there's only going to be a few that are really detailed like this. We want to take our time and get them really right, you know. I'm going to add a little bit of the phthalo blue and white and ultramarine. So phthalo blue, ultramarine, and white here. A little bit of all three. There we go. some up here. This one here. And then down below is just dots. Okay. 
And if you need to, you can use a small liner brush if you are more comfortable with that. It's up to you. Get some of that ultramarine blue. We got a question. Mm -hmm. They would like to know how can they mix a phthalo green? Thalo green, if you have thalo blue, you just add yellow to it. You'll get a thalo green or something similar at least. So would like a cad yellow light or something work? or? Yeah, probably cad yellow light will get you a brighter green than cad yellow medium would for sure. I'll do it here in a second. I'll show you. I'm going to round this bottom out so it's like it's got two parts. I'm going to just round this out a little bit, bring it out a little bit wider. And same deal with this one here. Do you find that back end of it a little bit more? And the color may not look all that great at first, but we'll soften it up here in a minute. We're just trying to get it dark enough to really register. We gotta get those dark areas in. This is a little bit lighter version of that dark color that I was using. Just added a little bit of white to it. Put ultramarine blue here, right along that line where those flowers start to merge. Starting to come all together a little bit. Huh? Good job. Thanks. I think I'm going to switch to this brush here. This is the the uh, two lot. Use that. Light ultramarine blue, add a little bit of ultramarine to it, but mostly the light ultramarine. And then get some white just on the tip. This brush may not be thin enough. We'll see if I can get thin enough lines for that. There's just some that are kind of coming off the sides that are like curved there, and it's hard to get with that round with the flat brush. So I need to, with the angle brush, you know. So I need to get this round brush so that I can kind of create these curved lines around the outside edges. The rest of it, they can be straight, but... Okay, there we go. Oh, pretty, pretty. Let's add some dabs to some of these. They're just kind of in our background area. Not a whole lot of detail to them, but just a little bit of something going on in there.
same thing here. Just do some little dabs. Indicate something going on there, but not really have any major detail to it. the shape of these all wrong. I kind of didn't go in on the sides like I was supposed to. They're supposed to kind of have this sort of Whisper, sorry. Have I been doing that for a while? Mm. Probably. Yeah. Get some purple and some of the burnt orange. We'll just Oh, I just pulled that canvas the mm. paint right off the canvas. That was weird. Not sure why I did that. Cured yet. Getting some of the light, uh, light burn orange here, and just dabbing that toward the bottom. details in this. I thought this would be a fast one, but it's got a lot, there's a lot of paint flowers to them. They have a lot of little bits to them, you know, a lot of parts. I never can tell anymore how long anything's going to take. And I take, I probably take longer than it needs to, to get it done. Getting some of this ultramarine blue here. I'm just going to kind of glaze over some of these with some of that blue color. Might zoom out here. I'm, I'm kind of thinking of one off camera there. Somebody would like to know what could they use if they don't have QBO? Um, burnt sienna and and thalo or and quinacridone magenta get something similar so it's very similar let's get some white with that ultramarine blue going to some of these I'm just going to do little fuzzies on them I'm not going to try to define them very much Get a purple and burnt umber, or ultramarine blue and purple, I mean.
like white with some of this purple here. I'm just setting my brush down and kind of skimming it so that it's catching the texture of this brush and canvas. Could you uh, repeat again what the QBO colors were? Yes, quinacridone, magenta, and burnt umber. to the sky a little bit of that blue color in fact I'm going to get some of that blue ultramarine blue Gonna fuzz out around the edge of this one here. <coughs> Want my brush off and just smush that around. Kind of disappear that one. See how that did? Let's get a little bit of those zinc white. here and just adding it to the tops of these ones that we want to be kind of fuzzy in the background here. So here's the quinacridone and burnt umber. Or, I'm sorry, burnt sienna and quinacridone. So there's that. And then <clears throat> if you mix the QBO with the quinacridone burnt orange with white, you get a similar color. It'll be more vibrant, obviously, because it's pure, you know, it's not cut with that brown. The burnt sienna dulls it a little bit, but it's still the same tone, so still in the same color family. I'm going to get some yellow oxide in here, and I'm going to add a little bit of that up in here. Let's just scrub that on. The 
stippling some of that on there. Let's stipple some on this then. and ultramarine with white hair. What's she doing? So before we said it was a cad red light plus burnt sienna plus quinacrino magenta. Say what? I wrote down before cad red light uh -huh. plus burnt sienna plus quinacrino magenta. Okay. Yeah, the 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 cad red light will make it more vibrant. So yeah, I probably probably would have bumped up that vibrancy by adding more of the cad red light. So it's. I was probably right the first time. <laughs> Either way, it'll work. So you said burnt sienna and quinacridone magenta just now. Uh-huh. So it it'll just make it a little bit more vibrant. Okay, Mark's notes are always right, so... It won't hurt anything. Listen to Mark. Good job, hon. some purple with that QBO color we mixed. And then get some of the lighter color and just dabbing that on. So there's a couple more that are really you now I've got three brushes. <laughs> <laughs> need to clean these out because they're going to start getting stuck with me. Dip these ones in that I haven't washed yet. So you don't want to keep their paintbrushes in the water, but you do want to keep them moist be until you can paint or dry them and paint to uh, clean the paint out. So I'm just dipping these ones back in that are used that I haven't washed yet. All right. Um, yeah, so we need some brighter highlights on some of these that are in the background. So get some of that light ultramarine and the white. Still a little bit too zoomed in for all of it to show on. Thanks. Thala blue and white hair. So I've got Thala blue and white and ultramarine blue and white. I'm just gonna alternate between the two. Here. 
some of them are quite bright, so don't be afraid of really going, going for it. You can always tone it down if you need to. That my note taking resembles the the guy at the hardware store. Yeah. Yeah, you were complaining about him not having good notes. See, look at that. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> Douglas Bell, McDonald, Cindy, house painting quote, cad red light plus, and then up at the top it says link palette knife painting, check, and then you got something rose, two to two o five how to find traceables. makes perfect sense. It's all very organized. <laughs> I hope you understand what any of that meant, because I didn't. <laughs> the Taco Bell and McDonald's was suggestions for dinner one, <laughs> one, one Tuesday night, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so it got saved along with... Oh, yeah, I think you po you... You you showed me that you held it up. Yeah, now I remember that. I do. <laughs> Margaret's passing me notes during the show. That was awesome. That looks about like how my house notebook looks. Like I started a house notebook thinking, you know, I'm gonna just keep track of everything, so I know where you know what we're doing, and then I'll have like notes on every page just they're all in random order it's driving me crazy I should have done a three ring binder so I could move the pages around after I took notes but no and if it had been a few years ago I would have if I when I wasn't working full time you know and had more time on my hands I I would have gone and re taken rewritten all of those notes out but now I'm just like yeah whatever <laughs> nobody got time for that <laughs> okay so just going back in here with my white highlights and um, let's, this is really going to make it pop it's going to really pull all those flowers forward we've got this big one here that we need to still like put details on so I'll we'll start the process of that it's got it's got the fuzzies all the way around just about so the ones that are sticking up straight towards us that's why we're seeing dots because those ones are are literally when you know when you've got a, a fuzzy flower like this and as those bristles turn towards you by the time they're paint facing straight on to you you're only seeing like a dot like that part of it and maybe a little bit of the stalk but um, so these ones that are that are on this part of the flower that are facing us are just going to be these little dots so that's all we're going to see of those and then they'll start to come down around so this but this middle part is just going to be a little literally like little dots and short lines This one here, this one's got the little lines all the way around it, so I'm going to try to get that look without having to draw every single little one in. So do all the way around it, and then kind of in the middle here, I'm just going to dab little dots, 
shorter lines. Kind of curve out like that. <clears throat> and I'm going back in with the blue and just add That dark purple. Just need those dark, deep colors to give us contrast so that our flower takes form. Otherwise, it'll just look flat. So, we need those dark little bits right in the center so that it looks really has some dimension. You're excused. Bless. It's not really bless you for that, is it? Could be. Could be. <clears throat> Just a few little bright whites to bring some of this in focus. These are fun.
a little white highlights to these. It's got some of that blue in it, so it's not pure white. Some of the blue and purple. I still haven't done this side yet. blue here. Most of these over here are pretty shadowy so we don't have to do a whole lot with them. This one has a little bit of more detail though. <coughs> This one a little bit bigger. Okay, we're almost there. 30 minutes? Yeah, about that. Maybe less. Hopefully less. Hopefully less. Now that's funny. It was about this time when Mark started thinking about dinner. <laughs> when are you not thinking about dinner? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Let's be real. Mm -hmm. Who's calling you? It's, it's the... Uh, the mommy grandma chat. Nice. Nice. What's Liam up to? He was trying to feed himself earlier. Our grandbaby. He's getting so big. They were asking what was he trying to eat. It was applesauce or something. Apple, blueberry, and spinach. Uh, I'll pass. You had me until the spinach there. <laughs> you lost me there. I have it on its own, but maybe not with apples and blueberries. That's fine. 
funny. All right, so now we need to add some our stems back in and we'll be done. Maybe we've covered up all of our stems. Magenta and unbleached titanium. What? What color? What? Are you mixing? I'm mixing up quinacridone, magenta, and unbleached titanium, and maybe a little bit of burnt orange. Okay, I'm going to use this to put in our stems that we disappeared here, the ones we want to make prominent again. So. Just a few of them. And we'll run some stray grasses through here. And do a little bit darker version. Let's get some of that quinacridum burnt orange. These would be a little bit darker. Let's get some of that purple, some of that unbleached titanium. I'll get kind of both on my brush, maybe one on one side and dip the darker on the other side. And I'm going to dab in right here with the tip of my brush. Some more of those seeds here. I can do some stems if we need to. These can go over the top of our, some of our flowers here. Push some of them into the background. This brush will give us a little bit more control over where these are going. And then some of these that are farther in the background, we can Make even lighter. There's a lot of these. So just do as many of these as you want, really. They're pretty much the entire painting is this whole bottom section is just full of these little grassy things here with the little seed pods. So do as many as you have the patience for. Is it triangle brush? Hmm? Is it triangle brush? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, that is the angle brush. There's like these little stalks that come off of it, so, and then the little seed pods kind of 
fan out around the stock. Is that your quarter-inch angle brush? Yes, quarter-inch. Did I, what did I say? I don't know. I think we just said angle brush. Mm-hmm. Quarter-inch angle brush. Yep. You're just mixing the same colors. Mm-hmm. Yep, just the magenta and the burnt orange and the purple. So just kind of doing versions of those for these grasses. And some of them just going back in here and highlighting a few of them. And let me get some green here, green and yellow oxide. If I can get some of that glazing liquid, I'm gonna add some. Glazing around here, just adding some of this green back in here and there, tucking it in. <clears throat> it's got a little bit dark. I'm kind of wishing that they were a little bit lighter back there, so I'm going to see if I can lighten it up. I'm just scrubbing in some lines with this scrubby brush. Using this will kind of help keep it from getting too defined because these are, we're so at the end of this process, we don't want to, I mean, unless we want, you know, really fine detailed gr green lines through our painting. But if we don't, if we want to keep them kind of soft and blended, then using this dry brush technique will help that. I mean, I can do some over the top of some of these. They're a little bit more. And a little bit of water. Make it a little bit more fluid. There we go. Careful not to cover up or anything that you don't want, you know, covered over. <laughs> it's profound. Mm
Okay. And we could have done this step like before we put in our purple flowers. And then again afterwards, you know, doing some. So and the more, more grasses that you have in there, the better I think it looks. All right, I like it. I like it. Let me add just a little bit more of the kind of covered up or some of my seed pod things, thingamabobs. Let's add just a few more of those in there and A little bit more with that one down here it's not as defined I'm trying to make sure that I got all the ones that I was supposed to be more in focus you can see a couple that I need to work on so purple and blue ultramarine blue and then I've got white here am I going too fast and not telling people what I'm mixing uh, there have been some comments about you know mixing in with the colors that you've already gotten mixed on your palette and uh, adding colors. Yeah. So, just okay. make trying to make it easier for them to follow along. Thank you. I get to go in and I forget to stop and mention that. Thank you. bright white on here, some of these that oops, make sure that if you've got a stem going over the top, you don't cover over the stem, that looks weird. Get half the flower covered and then the highlight is not. <laughs> don't do that. it's particularly difficult it just takes a lot you know a lot of layers to get it to look right I think some of them but yeah I like it I wish it was a little bit more yellowish I, I kind of think I went a little bit too dark on the background I wish I'd left it a little bit more orangey but too late let me get some yellow and some white here and a little bit of the burnt orange. And we'll use that for our splatters. That'll add some of that lighter color in that we're missing. Really not a whole lot we can do at this point because we've got it all down. So I can add a little bit of the glazing liquid if I got it, but I don't, so I'm not going to worry about it. And these yellow bits will really help contrast with that purple too. It'll look really pretty. Oh, I just splattered all over my shirt. <laughs> just splattered back. So, can you glaze with white? You can. Um, if you're glazing, I would I would use zinc white because zinc white's transparent. Glazing technically is you know, is meant to be a thin layer of transparent color, so. Are you talking about 
I think I, I think I got it on the floor. Oh well. Um, then layer of transparent color. So you know, if you want to keep it um, transparent, then you think white's your go-to color for white transparency. And I'm just going to dab off some of these that are a little bit big. look there. Mm -hmm. Let's add that lighter color in there. I hope Dave didn't fall asleep for that part. <laughs> See, hanging in there. I don't know. He was here earlier. I haven't seen him in chat lately, so. You may have given up. <sighs> All right. Yeah, I like it. Hope you liked it too and if you did you can give it a thumbs up and subscribe and all that good stuff you can share it with me if you paint it and uh, i've got all my social media links down in the description as well as the list of all the materials that we use today um, so if you click on the show more or the little arrow it'll drop down and show you all of that we've got some super chat nice yes Let's try with the microphone on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we got two super chats. Nice. The first one was from Mrs. Homie and says, love your art. Oh. And, uh, sorry. Love your art. The boast was righteous. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the boast? <laughs> yeah. And then the second one was from Tracy. Uh, no special comment, but uh, thank you so much, thank Tracy. You, Tracy. And thank you, Mrs. Homie. That's awesome. And I had to put the uh, the disco lights on side cam because the monitor and everything's Oops. blocking so we can't see it. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the disco lights on side cam? Mm -hmm. Fun. All right. <laughs> Yay. I think the Calm splatters definitely added those yellow splatters help help kind of bring out the tones in the thing in good contrast with those purple flowers so Thanks. you can leave those out though if you don't like it so it's all up to you it's your painting your rules you can do it your way share it with me if you'd like you can paint the bug if you want to oh yeah there's a bug in there but i'm not gonna paint that ain't got time for that <laughs> no <laughs> all right guys have so a great weekend and tomorrow if you, yeah if you want to join us for t tomorrow's show um on patreon um, we're going to be doing it on Crowdcast. There is uh, a link to Patreon there, patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. You can sign up, and then you can find the post that is on there that shows the link to the draft video, and it will uh, let you in. You can watch it with us tomorrow, 2 p.m. Central again. The last one was, what, four or five hours? Uh, yeah, five hours. I don't think so, this one's going to be that long. Uh, so... Pack four a lunch. Hours. Pack a lunch, we, uh We have it scheduled for four hours, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and how long did you have the last one? Uh, four hours. Four hours, And yeah. then we had to do a third one? Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, we went over we went five hours, at least five and a half, I think. But it was awesome. Yeah, it did. It turned out good. So, And like I said, you get um, not only the links to, um, to this video this month but you get the previous bonus videos so we have several of those and um yeah what are you laughing at mona said that you could just glue the fly leg into the painting <laughs> 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 and on that we're or, the go. Whole, or the whole fly i guess <laughs> it's true that's true he's in the trash somewhere <laughs> all right guys thanks for joining us today we'll see you next time bye